The Miami Grand Prix was an interesting race. It wasn't 10 out of 10, but it had some interesting battles, it had some lovely overtakes, and it confirmed something that we all kind of already knew. No one is beating Red Bull on pure pace this season. Red Bull dominated this race from start to finish. Perez got away from Paul well and held the lead easily from Alonso, pulling a few seconds gap early on, although he didn't actually pull enough of a gap, as we'll talk about in a minute. Max, on the other hand, started from ninth after a red flag in qualifying meant he couldn't get his second lap in. As you would expect, he made his way through the field pretty easily, with a double overtake of both Kevin Magnussen and Charles Leclerc on the pit straight, a standout move. By lap 15, Max had worked his way past Alonso, Leclerc, Sainz, Russell, Magnussen, you get the point. And he was sitting within a few seconds of the leader and his teammate, Perez who started on the medium tyres. This was where Perez really lost the race. Max got past all of those cars and yet was still only two seconds behind Perez. If Perez was going to win the race, he needed to build a gap while Max was losing time overtaking all those cars. But he just didn't have the pace. Perez stopped first and Max stayed out taking over the lead. And Max was putting in some really good times on those hard tyres. 40 lap old hard tyres and when Perez came back out on fresh hards Max was still matching him and eventually he was going quicker on those used tyres. When Max finally pitted on lap 45 out of 57 he put on those medium tyres and he came out right behind Perez. On fresh tyres he blitzed past him within a lap easily then winning the race. The Red Bulls were absolutely taking it easy and was still putting in times that the cars behind just couldn't match with Fernando Alonso having an utterly lonely race but claiming another podium in third over a pit stop behind both of the Red Bull cars. His race was so laid back that at one point he had time to watch the big screens when his teammate happened to be getting past someone into turn one reporting back to the team that it was a good move. Classic Fernando. His teammate though Lance Stroll didn't have a good race and finished outside of the points. Fourth would go to George Russell, who had a brilliant afternoon. He started on the medium tyres, and after running in fifth place early on, a fantastic move on Carlos Sainz cemented his fourth place. Hamilton started 13th, and for the first part of the race, he was stuck in a DRS train behind Alex Albon, and I was thinking this is just going to be one of those days for Lewis. But when the pit stop started to happen and he got clean air, he started to put in some really good laps. He went really long on the hard tyres, stopping on lap 38, and then he came out in 13th place again, but on the medium tyres. And he had to make his way past Bottas, Magnussen, Gasly, and finally getting past Charles Leclerc to make his way up to 6th. A brilliant recovery from him, especially considering where he started. And I think Mercedes will go away from that weekend thinking they maximised their results with 4th and 6th. I actually think if he didn't lose so much time early on in that DRS train, he would have actually had the pace to beat Carlos Sainz into 5th. Speaking of Sainz, we then have Ferrari. Oh dear. First off, Sainz didn't really have the pace this weekend, and you could argue he hasn't quite had the pace at any weekend so far. He was passed by Russell and Alonso and was running in fifth, but he was really in his own race and not challenging anyone. He then also got a five second penalty for speeding into the pits, and he was speeding. He locked both front tires coming into pit entry. It was a slam dunk. It didn't really make a difference in the end though, as he was overtaken on the track anyway and was way ahead of the next place car. Leclerc on the other hand, well, he finished where he started, 7th. After his pit stop, he was down in 13th for a long time, unable to make his way through any cars. It honestly seemed like he was lacking pace, and Ferrari did report that the car was unpredictable, so maybe that was the case for both drivers. The funny old thing, really. Mercedes and Ferrari are the complete opposites. Ferrari have incredible one-lap pace, but they struggle for race pace, or often just dropping back and not being able to to hang and they've got terrible tyre degradation. Mercedes on the other hand have really poor one lap pace, but their car does seem to come more alive in the races more often than not. Complete polar opposites. What this race did prove to me though is that Formula 1 has a bit of a tyre issue. We shouldn't have cars at any point doing 45 laps of a 57 lap race on one set of tyres, the hearts. Not only that, Max, for instance, and Lewis and other cars were staying out on those tyres. Max was putting in fast laps. His tyres were 40 laps old and he was matching Perez, who had fresh, fresher tyres. If we want more interesting races, 
We need strategies that don't just include medium hard. And we need strategies that don't include doing an entire race distance on one set of tyres. It also proved to me that Red Bull cannot be beaten on pace this year. It's impossible. They can't. They are too quick. Alonso finished a pit stop behind and all the upgrades in the world at Imola for Mercedes, Ferrari, Aston Martin, whatever teams bring upgrades are not going to bridge that level of gap. I accept that at different races, the gap has been different. Maybe this is a bit of an outlier race. We hope so. But unless Red Bull have serious issues with reliability, accidents, I don't see any other team beating them. I think we're going to have lots of races with Red Bulls 1, one and 2. Just like we had an era of Mercedes 1 and 2. I think we're now in the Red Bull era and I don't see it changing anytime soon. I'm looking forward to Imola though. Lots of teams bringing upgrades. I'm not saying the packing order is necessarily going to change, but I'll be really interested to see what upgrades are brought and if they make a difference. I hope you enjoyed this Miami Grand Prix review. If you did, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.